one, I'm Mishov, and I'm presenting solution to problem E, hand of the free mark D. So this is a problem that is about combinatorics, and this problem is based on a pretty famous combinatorial magic trick. Uh, I will start by explaining how the original magic trick looks like, how it is solved, and then I will explain how the solution generalizes to the problem that is used here. So in this problem, we have a deck of cards, and some volunteer from the audience shuffles the deck and selects five cards uh, that gives these five cards to the magician's assistant. The assistant then looks at those five cards and hides one of them and rearranges the other four into a sequence. At this point, the entire thing is shown to the magician. The magician can see the sequence but cannot see the fifth card. And to the astonishment of the audience, the magician can always reconstruct what is the fifth card and correctly announce the name of this card. This uh, magic trick is called as the Fitch Cheney magic trick. And uh, it's actually non-trivial also for mathematicians. Why is this the case? Well, because at the first glance, what you have here are four visible cards. The assistant can choose a permutation of these four cards, but this gives you only 24 possibilities. But the deck has 52 cards, so there are 48 possibilities for the hidden card. So how do you account the extra bid you need to tell what the extra card is? And the main trick is that uh, the assistant can also choose the card in a suitable way. So he can choose a card that will allow you uh, to encode it in a better way. The original trick is done with a deck of 52 cards. And for this one, there is a very lovely strategy for humans uh, that is easy to remember. So what you can do is as follows. Look at, the assistant looks at the five cards, and uh, as there are only four suits, there have to be two cards of the same suit. So you can choose any of any two such cards. In my example, it's a five and the seven of hearts. And now we can put it, uh, there are only 13 hearts, and if you imagine them on the circle, then from one of them to the other, the distance has to be between one and six. It cannot be more than six in both directions. So from the five to the seven, the distance is only two. If it were different hearts, then we could swap them around. So now what we can do is, uh, oh, sorry about that. What we can do is uh, that we now, uh, the assistant will reveal the smaller one as the first card. And now what we need to do is encode the distance. And we can encode the distance by choosing the permutation of the other three cards. So the lexicographically smallest permutation is distance one, the second is distance two, and so on up till six. So in this way, we can encode any card from a deck of 52, but this is not optimal. Already for, uh, so we could perform the same trick with a bigger deck of cards. What is the limit? To find the limit, we have to think about the problem in terms of uh, combinatorial structures. So what's going on here? Imagine a huge bipartite graph. In the left partition, the vertices represent all possible permutations of four cards. So these are all possible things the assistant can show to the magician. On the right-hand side, the vertices in the right partition will be all possible subsets of five cards. So these are all possibilities what was uh, selected by the audience. And now what we are looking for, uh, as any strategy for the mag magician, can actually be represented by a matching between these two partitions. So to as many of the four permutations, we have to want to assign different five subsets. And of course, the edges between the left and right partition correspond to only valid choices. So each four permutation is only connected with the five subsets that contain all four of those cards. And the bigger matching we can find, the more there are cases in which the magician will correctly identify the fifth missing card. Now, it turns out to be the case that uh, this graph is essentially symmetric. So uh, all of the permutations on the left hand side are connected to the same number of uh, subsets, and all subsets are connected to the same number of permutations, and so on. So we can apply some uh, version of Hall's theorem and say that there is always has to be a matching that uh, completely uh, satisfies the smaller of the two partitions. So we can add more and more cards, and uh, actually the maximum number of cards when there is exactly a perfect matching is 124. So with a deck of 124 cards, you can still perform the original magic trick. Now, this problem is bringing in one more complication. And the complication is that in our deck, the 
cards in the deck have different colors of backs. There are up to 10 different colors. And for each color, we know the number of cards of this particular color. And now the question in the original problem is, uh, what is the optimal strategy for this particular deck of cards? What is the probability if the magician and the assistant are using the optimal strategy that the magician will be able to identify the final card? For what we have to realize for this problem, additionally to the previous observations, is first of all, the number of partitions of the uh, of colors is small. So what this means is that in the problem K, the number of cards that are drawn is up to 10. The number of colors is also up to 10. And all possibilities, what is the multiset of colors those 10 selected cards have? There is a very small number of those, and we can actually afford to iterate over all of those one at a time. Now, I'm claiming that each of these partitions of colors is actually its own separate subproblem. Why is this the case? Well, because the magician can see the K minus one cards completely, so he knows the color of each of them, and he can also see the back of the last card, so he can exactly identify what is the partition of colors we are dealing with, and therefore they can agree on a, sep on a separate strategy for each of these partitions. Now, for each of these partitions uh, of colors, what we have to do is we have to imagine again the same type of a bipartite graph. And now we can count what is the size of the left partition, what is the size of the big, bigger partition, the right one. And the smaller of those two partitions is giving you uh, the number of cases you will be able to solve correctly. So the size of the matching for this particular subproblem. And the other things that are left over represent the cases that you cannot solve. So you do this separately for each partition of colors, each multiset of colors the selection can have, and then you sum up the results, divide it, and you have the final answer. And that's it for the problem. For more from the ICPC World Finals DACA, follow us at news.icpc.global and on social media with our hashtag ICPCWFDACA.